Security, thank you for staying with us. The last several weeks have seen a marked surge in rocket and incendiary balloon attacks from the Gaza Strip, raising tensions and threatening fragile truce talks. With me in the studio is a member of Israel's Security Cabinet, Minister Yoav Gallant. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank Before you. we speak of, uh, about Gaza, I want to ask you about Iran. Is there a way Israel can stop Iran from reaching its goals and ambitions? Uh, the Middle East is in a very delicate situation. The Iranians are sweeping the Middle East from east to west, from the Persian Gulf to the Mediterranean. They already took over uh, Syria, Lebanon, and uh, Iraq, and in another region, Yemen. And uh, we are looking on this uh, situation, and uh, we are very worried about it, because establishing uh, an Iranian military force, an army, in Syria, and another Hezbollah, Hezbollah Second Front, in the Golan Heights, is very alarming to the Israeli security. Therefore, we will do anything necessary in order to avoid it. We are very lucky to have the United States together with us in this struggle. When you mean, when we say that we will do everything which is necessary to stop it, it's only in the Syrian Lebanese front or we're talking about Iran itself, Iraq and other fronts? Well, uh, speaking about the uh, operational issues, let's uh, uh, keep it uh, foggy as it is, but uh, let me put it this way. Uh, we cannot allow Iran to possess uh, weapons of mass destruction, especially not a nuclear weapon. And anything necessary to be done will be done by uh, Israel in the diplomatic as well as the security and military sites. Because about a decade ago, when you were still uh, wearing uniform, uh, uh, Israel w w was discussing the possibility of attacking Iran itself. You were mentioning uh, weapons of mass destruction, so the, 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 the nuclear project was on the table. Now it's on the table again because Iran is breaching uh, uh, the contract. Does it worry Israel? Should we, should we uh, be ready uh, for another possible strike? Let me put it this way. Uh, the situation has been changed dramatically. And uh, the very important step that was taken by President Trump to uh, withdraw from the very bad deal with Iran is very important to the uh, security uh, of the region. Uh, because what the president said to, to the Iranians is absolutely clear. He said, you are not allowed to possess weapons of mass destruction, especially not a nuclear weapon, uh, and the uh, measures to carry it, uh, of course, missiles or, or uh, plans. Uh, second, uh, we are not going to allow you uh, to attack other countries uh, to activate terror actions all over the region. And if you do so, you have a, an issue, a business with the United States of America. And this is a very big deal on the table. And uh, after, uh, I would say, two or three years, that the, the struggle was on a very low flame, on the, the, the friction was uh, slow. Uh, we have all seen that uh, by the beginning of this year, uh, Soleimani was uh, taken out of the, of the game. And uh, if anyone didn't understand that in the past in Iran, they understand very well now. So you've mentioned Soleimani, and that's another uh, very important act that President Trump took. How important it is uh, uh, to the situation in the Middle East? Because you've mentioned Syria and uh, Lebanon being taken by Iran. Soleimani was the mastermind behind that. Is the fact that he's out of the game, does it change anything? I believe that this, uh, uh, this action had uh, three different layers. The first one is the tactical uh, and operational issue that uh, uh, actually the, the American forces uh, demonstrate their capability, which is in the highest level possible. Second, uh, I, I would say that uh, uh, the uh, 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 taking out Soleimani of this game will change the situation because he was, was the, the head of, uh, of this monster. 
and uh, all the arms that were sent to Syria, to Lebanon, to other places were activated by Soleimani. But the very important point is the strategic one, because by uh, killing Soleimani, the Americans say, said to the Iranians, if you want to fight with us, this will be the result. If you want to talk to us, we are ready to negotiate. So that's something, let's move to the southern uh, uh, front, which you've commanded for quite a few years. That's something that Israel should implement in the southern command vis-a-vis -vis Hamas, telling them, if you want to fight, fight, let's fight, and if not, let's talk? The proportion between Hamas and the IDF, or between Gaza and Israel, is one to thousand. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we can, uh, you know, eliminate uh, Gaza. There are two million citizens that were taken hostages by the, by the uh, Hamas. And uh, this terror organization with uh, 30,000 people is controlling their future and their life. Therefore, uh, if you want to do anything to, uh, uh, to the Hamas leadership or to, to the Gaza Strip, you have to take under consideration what will be the end game of this situation. Meaning that uh, if we are going to remove Hamas from control, from position, which is possible for Israel, who is going to uh, switch them? Who is going to take place after them? I don't see any volunteers around, not the Egyptians, not the PLO, and uh, definitely not the United States. And or, not Israel. And uh, I wouldn't suggest anyone in Israel uh, to be the one that control uh, Gaza. I've been there too many times and uh, for too many and, uh, and long periods and I don't think it's a good idea for us. So when you hear, uh, um, for example, Defense Minister Bennett or others saying that it's a matter of time until we have a huge operation in Gaza and we will kick out Hamas, it's only words? Well, you have to, you have to uh, define the fine line between the options. One option is to destroy Hamas and to replace them. I don't think that this is something that's going to happen. The second option is to make them weaker and to push them to the corner. This is something that how, is more useful for us. How do you do it? Well, I'm not, I'm not going to elaborate the, the uh, uh, operational systems and, and ideas, but I, all I can say is that uh, uh, we can find anything that is needed as far as, as command and control or ammunition, weapons, uh, uh, anything, and uh, either to, uh, to, uh, uh, to bomb it or to take over, whatever is necessary. So all the options are on the table. But we have to remember that after we finish these operations, uh, someone has to take care of the results in Gaza. If there is something very obvious in the past few months is that uh, Hamas is not interested in fighting. He didn't fight in November when one of the leaders of the Islamic Jihad was killed in Gaza. And it doesn't fight ever since. It seems that Hamas is looking for every way to talk to Israel and to find some kind of agreement which will be, bring uh, prosperity to the Gaza Strip. Is it something that Israel should give a hand to? Well, since the, the, the first uh, big operation that I was commanding, cast-led operation, about 11 years ago, uh, uh, there is a, a, a huge degradation in the capabilities of Hamas comparing to Israel. Uh, actually, they are in the military side, they are in a dead end because uh, the, the tunnels are almost closed. Uh, the, the missiles are not very effective because of the Iron Dome. The sea is closed and, uh, and it's very, very uh, difficult to infiltrate into Israel above the surface. Therefore, uh, they have to recalculate their, their, their uh, uh, route. And I believe that uh, the responsibility for the future of the citizens, together with the no-go op military options, bring them to what you described before, and I hope that eventually we will find a way to, to, uh, uh, to live uh, side by side this way or another. So what stops Israel from agreeing to that? To, do, to what? 
to, to, to moving forward in the civil front and not in the military front with Hamas? Basically, I believe that a better uh, civilian situation uh, and a higher standard of living uh, for the citizens in Gaza is in, is in Israel's uh, best uh, uh, interest. But having said that, we have to find a way to separate the, uh, the, the goods and the, the, the supply that get into Gaza so it won't get to the Hamas end, but only for the civilian hands. And this is very difficult. I mean, how you separate the first uh, 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 iron metals that goes into Gaza or the concrete or other, other uh, measures and uh, make sure that uh, Hamas doesn't get them. I'll give you an example. If you, if you go in a, an operation, because uh, a bunch of 30 terrorists capture 1,000 kids in a, in a school, and the terrorists ask for food or water. You understand very well that they will be the first one to eat and to drink. That's the problem we're having by, with supplying Gaza with civilian, civilian goods. And uh, we are doing anything possible in order to bypass this problem. You've been criticizing the defense minister, Naftali Bennett, for the way he handles that situation. You've even said that uh, he harms Israel deterrence vis-a-vis -vis Gaza. Explain why. I uh, criticize the way he uh, pronounced his approach and what he did later on. If you want to shoot, shoot. Don't talk. But if you say, Every balloon is equal to a rocket. And later on, you do nothing with the balloons. This hurt Israel deterrence because it was said by the Minister of Defense, which is not a regular person in Israel. Do you agree that a balloon is equal to a rocket? Uh, I don't think so, but I have to, to tell you that uh, we have to change the equation between us. When I was commanding, uh, Southern com Command, uh, I was asked by the government time after time to uh, make uh, uh, some kind of a ceasefire, okay? Uh, I insist in any given time that after we make a ceasefire and they don't shoot and we don't shoot, we will be allowed to cross the fence and to make sure that there are no uh, mines or, uh, or bombs or any, any kind of uh, booby trap or whatever it is. Uh, because it symbolized the proportion in power between us and Hamas. Now it's impossible that there is a ceasefire. We don't shoot them, they don't shoot us. And at the same time, they are sending balloons with weapons and ammunition or uh, fire in order to hurt uh, Israeli uh, civilians or Israel settlements. Therefore, I believe that this equation has to be changed, and I'm sure that it is in the hands and in the uh, capability of the IDF. Minister Yoav Gallant, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Me. My pleasure. Thank you very much.